Angeles Clippers, and he's bringing a friend with him and Paul George. We have a friend with us now on the show, the Jet, Kenny Smith. He's in L.A. where all the actions happen. And, okay, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard teaming up. Did you see this coming? Well, I'm in Los Angeles, and we had an earthquake, but I didn't realize this was it. <laughs> <laughs> it was an earthquake earlier, and my son Malloy, I'm shouting him out, He's like, Daddy, you never believe it. And I was like, nope, I wouldn't. And he told me what's going on. So shout out to Malloy for keeping close to what's going on. His ear to the NBA streets. No, I didn't expect that. Not, not both of them, no. Well, when you see these two guys teaming up and you think of the wings around the league, are they the best two and three that we're going to see in the NBA next season? Well, you know, obviously, you know, the team that plays in Staples Center right after them or before them are going to say, you know, we got one of the best threes in the game ever. And he's still back, you know, LeBron James. But what what this allows the Clippers to do is also still get real. They have a really good team already. You know, they got uh, Harold uh, Montrell coming off the bench, Lou Williams, Patrick Beverly. And then all of a sudden, you you know, you throw those two guys in the starting lineup. And then let's say you grab some more free agents like an Andre Iguodala or someone else. You grab all of these great players and you have uh, arguably the same thing that Golden State Warriors had in the uh, Western Conference. The same thing that Brooklyn is trying to do in, in a couple of years when KD is healthy. So the Clippers were able to to mortgage their future in a sense in giving up uh, four unprotected first round picks and another uh, two more pick swaps and then one protected first round pick and Danilo Gallinari, Shea Gilgis, Alexander. That sounds like a lot, but they do keep most of their roster intact. Like you said, Patrick Beverly, Montrez, Harold, Lou Will. I mean, there's a lot of talent. They're they're also deep. Would you agree? Without question, but. I, I never understood the concept of mortgages in your future when your future could be now. Yeah. So you could have four years right now that is actually, you know, Kawhi Leonard, I think, is only like 27 years old, 28 years old. You know, <laughs> he's a, no, I think he's younger than that. Probably. He's 28. Still, he's 28. Yeah. 28, 28 years old. And, you know, you, you have uh, another guy, Paul George, under 30. So you have your best two players, arguably, that will probably – three and four in MVP voting voting this year, <laughs> like under 30, like that's the future is now and here. Like you have a future now and they're still young enough to play at a high level for seven, eight years. Looking at what the Thunder did in the sense of giving up Paul George and getting a lot of future first round picks, do you foresee Steven Adams, Russell Westbrook also being on the market? I, I would say that there's going to be a conversation with Russell Westbrook about what we're doing uh, because, I, you know, I, I don't think at his stage of his career, he's looking at it and saying, hey, I gotta, I'm got to. i looking forward to rebuilding with some young guys who are trying to get some experience. That was the whole reason you brought in Carmelo. That was the whole reason you brought in, you know, Paul George. You brought in guys who were veteran guys who were going for championship runs. So there will be a, a deep conversation if it's not already had been had with Russell Westbrook about the future of that franchise. You know, Sam Mitchell brought up an excellent point in the sense that when you look at historically in the NBA, you know, guys want to be Lakers. The Knicks had a, a ton of cap space, but the top free agents went with the Brooklyn Nets and now the Los Angeles Clippers. Is it a new day in the league where you don't really look at the history, but you look at the possibility of what you can be to a franchise? No, I think Sam, Sam is still old school. <laughs> because <laughs> You know, in the last 10 years, guys have shown you that that doesn't matter. Uh, you know, social media has changed the landscape of the game. Uh, you, you're instant. Your information is instant to everyone around the world, which it wasn't only if you played in New York or, or, or Los Angeles and you, when we grew up. You know, but, you know, LeBron James went back to Cleveland. You know, he went to Miami. He didn't play in the top markets, even though people like Miami as a vacation place. It's not a high market, you know, in terms of a market, you know, so no, guys have changed the landscape, you know, through every social media channel, I can know exactly what's going on with you in that moment, and I can follow you, so, you know, Paul George went to Oklahoma City prior to this, it, it isn't about small market, big market anymore, it's about, can I win, oh, am I from there, and the biggest thing, those two guys are from this area in Los Angeles, 
I'm seeing Paul George since he was 12, 13 years old playing in, you know, AAU basketball tournaments around here. And, you know, and, and same almost with Kawhi Leonard being out here. So the call to come home was bigger than the call to stay. That's how I look at it to me, the call to come home. And then you have, you know, the ownership with, with the Clippers. You know, you have a unique owner who can, you know, have unique ideas and unique things for his team and his franchise. Why not? Yeah, you mentioned LeBron going back to Miami, kind of setting the tone for this generation. Also, coming home, that narrative worked well for him. Looks like uh, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard will try to have that narrative work for them as well. Kenny Smith, appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, only thing is now, man, we, me and you, we can't go to New York and leave Atlanta. You know, where they, they get us. <laughs> we can't get the call to go home. Can't be bigger than the call to stay in Atlanta at TNT for us. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I think uh, me going home, no one would pay attention to that anyway. You know, maybe, maybe you're the star that you are. They pay attention to that. All right, Kenny, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, breaking news more now with the with the Lakers, Wes Wilcox. Uh, what are you hearing? So it's been reported that Caldwell Pope going back to the Lakers, two years, sixteen million dollars. If we're counting this up, adding it up as we go. Yep. Danny Green, fifteen, eight million or so for Caldwell Pope should leave around eleven million dollars or so, maybe almost thirteen, depending upon how they do it. So we're seeing this come off the board, and this is what we talked about. You know, Plan B. What would happen with the domino effect of Kawhi? And we're seeing it happen really quickly. So they seem to have the wing situation handled for the Lakers. Now, the rest of that cap room has to be spent on trying to get some help inside, correct? You would think, well, they have the inside issue and they have a point, point guard, guard issue, issue, unless you're going to put LeBron at the point, which we know that's certainly an option or it gets to that point for everybody. Um, but, yeah, and, and that's where you start to wonder, is it going to be DeMarcus Cousins? Is it going to be JaVale McGee? Maybe J. Michael Green? You know, the, at this point, people had to wait so long. This has been talked about a lot. The timing effect, it's hard. And Green played for the Clippers last year, and clearly they don't have the cap space for him now. Yeah, unless they use their room team exception, mm. which they still which have. They Two years, about $10 million, a starting salary of 4.7. So there's no doubt that they're going to be moving hard on this. And one of the things that's interesting, you know, it's only midnight out there or 1230 or so. It is so late. Half the NBA is going to be asleep. Legitimately, half the NBA is asleep. And so I, I think about it specifically to Marcus Morris. He has his bird rights being held by the Boston Celtics. And if you're the Dallas Mavericks, who were supposedly also in the market, cap room, right? also 23, 23 million in room, okay. they were in the market for Danny Green. There's $11 million left in LA. You got to believe Marcus Morris is like the next best available player on the market. But the Boston Celtics have bird rights, which means they can exceed the cap to re-sign him. So these teams are going to be pushing to get this thing done, and some of the teams may not just be answering the phone. Certainly the first domino has fallen, though, and what we were all waiting for, we talked about it earlier as far as uh, the, the trades for DeAndre Hunter and Jackson Hayes as well. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, now members of the Los Angeles Clippers. A lot for us to discuss. Look, Donovan Mitchell. Oh, wow. I think that's, it's, what, what, what doll was that? Is that Ted from those movies? I don't know. It's a teddy bear, though. That wasn't a cake. It was just Woj. That's what Donovan Mitchell is saying. And Dwayne Wade, now that's what I'm talking about. The NBA, man, we know he's been involved in some big moves. LeBron James going back to Miami or going to Miami to play with Wade. Long time ago now.